what are you up to at the minute? I'm just I'm seeing some questions coming through, but I just want to get the full background of what what have you, what you've got going on at the minute before we go on to those. So what have you got going on? At this very moment, I'm in my studio, the Beatles Museum, and uh, which I should I should kind of show you guys around a little bit because it's pretty fun. Do it. Do it's it. called the Beatles Museum for a reason. Uh, right now, no, to, 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 to really quickly, Beatles fan. <laughs> to answer your your first question about the what am I doing? I'm actually studying. Uh, I'm, I'm setting up my keyboard bass rig uh, for a, tr a tour in Japan with Akiko Yano Trio. So I have I have this uh, M Audio Key Rig 49 here. I have you know you have to hook it up into a, a Mac, and I'm using Main Stage. Oh right, yeah, yeah. It's not plugged. It's not turned on yet, but I have just a monitor. It kind of lives right now. It's living on this microphone stand. It could live anywhere. Yeah, main stage um, is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, it goes into this this microbook two um, interface here. But the Beatles Museum is called the Beatles Museum because um, I have great reference for the Beatles. See, I mean, I'm kicking the ass for life when when I first heard them play and saw them on TV performing. Yeah. So it all it all starts with um, up. This is I'm, I'm standing on a chair now in my studio. It's just high. <laughs> Don't so fall. If, I, if I fall down and yeah. you hear a keyboard crashing and everything, that'll just be me. <laughs> Don't worry, there's a hospital nearby. So, lunch boxes that represent years of all the Beatles. You know, all the albums are, are represented. Wow. And is this? Have, have you been like collecting these for years? Yes. Yeah. For a long time. And uh, this is the stage that I used to play on every night at the Ed Sullivan Theater. Oh wow! So that's the Beatles on that show. So sorry, yeah. sorry all the reflections. I don't know if you could see. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, you can see. <laughs> it's kind of a behind-the-scenes moment. But the reason it's called the Beatles Museum is because it's, I was always fascinated by the fact that that so many fan items were available. To, to buy. So I have these. Oh wow! These framed. Let me see. It's a lot of reflection. Sorry. These framed uh, window box frames that we put all these things inside of. So there's an actual Beatles wig inside the package, the original package. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, yeah. And lots of these little pins you wear. These I are nylon, <laughs> nylon stockings from Italy, actually. In, on, on the nylon stockings, there's a pattern, a repeating pattern of the beetle haircut and the Hofner base going up and down the legs of these <laughs> stockings inside this package. How long have you been collecting this stuff for? Oh, I, I went nuts for a while. Cigar bands from Holland, a, a promotional band-aid from the movie Help. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it? Help, man. Anyway. <laughs> These are actually mothballs from the Philippines. Beatles mothballs. There's somebody online, Will, saying that they live <laughs> just off Penny Lane. They, oh, really? Yeah. In Liverpool? Yeah. yeah awesome. Just on, this guy called Paul Trainer saying, I live just off Penny Lane. Wow, I've been by there a few times. That's great. I was going to ask you, have you been over to the cavern and stuff like that, yeah? Yes. Uh, our Beatles man, the Fab Fo, has played... Uh, Liverpool quite a few times. Yeah, what are you guys doing then? Are you are you still gigging? Are you have you ever thought about touring that project or not? Uh, we we play almost every weekend somewhere in the country and oh, really? sometimes out of the country. We're in Singapore a couple of weeks ago. So this is uh, obviously the Sadowskis. A very handy thing that I designed a few years ago. The holds like seven bases per rack. It's one. It's one rack, but you can squeeze them all in there. Yeah, the headstocks are resting on like leather up there, so they don't yeah. get scratched. So, so this has been. Somebody's actually really? asking about the uh, the Sadowskis. Um, Mauro, Mauro, I think his name is. He's saying, when did the uh, the whole signature idea come for the Sadowski bases, and and what's the difference between you know, a normal jazz bass and one of yours. 
Well, the main the main difference is yes, jazz bass is the key word because they're they're most they're based on the jazz bass, the original jazz bass design, with the, with the two pickups, the two jazz pickups. Yeah. And Sadowski had already been making a, a, a really incredible instrument for years, but I found that um, a lot of times when I was trying to get as much punch and presence for the way I play on lab gigs, um, I would have to dial up extra mid-range, like in the 500 kind of range yeah. area on an amplifier or something so that I could play as long as I wanted to without my fingers hurting by the end of the night because I was yeah. digging in so hard to try to make that frequency come out. So what we ended up doing was we put a mid-range circuit in that you can, you can uh, activate oh, okay. with just yeah, a switch. Yeah, yeah. And that and and you can sort of dial in your sort of favorite mid range area uh, with the with the preamp when you go inside the instrument you can sort of dial up a five hundred or an eight hundred peak. Oh, and you do that from inside the actual cavity, yeah. Yeah, and once it's in place, then you can just you, you can just access it, you know, to your liking with a quick flip of the switch. It also has a twenty two fret neck, so. You know, and, and I'm, as you can see, I'm pretty much a four-string guy. I do a lot of five-string, but when I really want to enjoy life, I play a four-string. Um, so you, you get the F on the on the G string. You get the high F. I kind of wanted a, a two-octave neck, but it, I think balance-wise, it didn't work out in Roger's opinion. So he we sort of compromised at the 22 fret. How long have you been playing Sadowski's for? Oh man, since wow, since the beginning of of Sadowski as a bass. Since the beginning, God, before he was before he was making basses. Actually, he was. Oh really? Actually, he was actually servicing basses for New York studio guys like myself and Neil Jason and Marcus Miller. Yeah. And we would hit, we would come in and ha he would put a preamp in for us, so we'd have that little extra bit of you know, because New Yorkers always have something to prove, if you know what I mean. 